your Bible tonight, if you will. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, please. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, three verses. I'm going to read the first three verses. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Now, Father, we ask your blessing upon the reading of the Scripture tonight, and as we open up your word, and uh, we want to glean the truths that you have for us this evening. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to each heart tonight as only you can. Lord, I pray that you would minister your word to your people tonight. Open our understanding. and Lord, speak to us tonight and help me as I bring the truth. And Lord, let it be clear. Let it be concise. Let it be understandable. Let it be helpful to the people of God this evening. I'll thank you for it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to talk a little bit about be rejoicing as a Christian. Be rejoicing. A third century man, get that, a third century man was anticipating death. And he penned these words to a friend. Third century. It's a bad world. An incredibly bad world. But I've discovered in the midst of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. Wow. Adoniram Judson, you always talk about Adoniram Judson who went to Burma as a missionary, and he went there, and we often talk about how he went uh, almost seven years without ever seeing a convert because he was trying to uh, learn their language plus get a Bible into their language so they could communicate the gospel. But when he got there, he had not learned the language, but the story goes he walked up to a Burmese man and embraced him. And the man went home and reported that he'd seen an angel. The living Christ was so radiant in Adoniram Judson's countenance that the people of Burma called him Mr. Glory Face. How about that? I tell you, when, when, when we get the love of God in us, that people say, see it in our face, uh, then we'll have an impact in the world that we ought to have. There was a bigoted Chinese who never could be induced to attend a Christian service, but he finally came to a missionary and said, I want to hear about your Christ. He said, oh, I've never heard the words of it, but he said, I have heard the laughter in your house and in the houses of my countrymen who have embraced your faith. And if you have anything that makes people so joyous, I want it. One great need, listen, our great need in America, obviously, yes, we take more Christians. But I think the great need we need are more glad Christians, more happy Christians. You know, the, the whole idea that most people's thought when they think of Christians are people who are pretty sad about it. I mean, you don't have any fun, you don't ever smile, you don't ever laugh, you don't, you know, you're, you're pretty boring. What, what kind of life do you have? Huh? And, and, and that's not the Christianity that the Bible portrays. There, there, there's a joyfulness and a rejoicing that comes with being a Christian. Philippians is a real book of joy. I'll say more about that in just a moment. But, you know, it, it had a rough start. If you remember, Philippi was the chief city of Macedonia that Paul got the vision to come to. He had the vision saying, come over and help us. Well, remember when he got there, there weren't any men anywhere. I wonder if he said to the Lord, where is this guy? <laughs> this is the guy who said, come help us. Where is he? There wasn't any. They said, well, there's some women that meet for prayer down by the river. And so he went down there and found the women meeting for prayer. 
And, and of course, he gave the gospel to them, and Lydia got saved. And Lydia's household got saved. And got baptized. And then, then they, they, they began to go through the city and talk to other people, but they got in trouble there and, uh, because they were preaching, and uh, they got thrown in jail. And that's where we read in midnight, they were singing and praying and praising God. And uh, then the earthquake came, and remember, the jailer came in and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then the jailer, he got saved, and his wife got saved, and all the little jailers got saved, and everybody, it, it, it was an amazing start there in Philippi. And, and yet, over and over again, it's a book of joy. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you happy in the service of the king? Is that just a song we sing? Or is that really something that we're happy serving the Lord? Uh, you know, Psalm 1 said, blessed is the man. What's the word blessed mean? Happy is the man that walks not in the counsel of ungodly or stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Happy is the man. And so it means happy. So let's look tonight at Philippians 3 and look at three keys to happy Christian service. Three keys to happy Christian service. Number one is to be rejoicing. Be rejoicing. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. And it's interesting he would say to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Because 18 times in four chapters, he tells them either to be joyful or have joy or to rejoice. Uh, it's used over 18 times in just four chapters. I'm sure when he wrote it again, maybe Paul thought, again? <laughs> he says, well, I don't mind writing it again, but they may, they may not like hearing it again. Uh, but you know, repetition is the key to learning. Most of the time, not only do we not get it sometimes the first time we hear it, but oftentimes we hear it, we get it, and then we forget it, and we have to be reminded about it. Uh, we, we, there, there's many times you've sat in, the, in a pew, and you've heard somebody teach or preach, and it's not a brand new truth, but it's one that you heard before, but you hadn't thought about for a long time. And you say, boy, I needed that reminder. I hadn't thought about it in that way for quite some time. And so they, he, he, what he's saying is here, don't ever grow weary, don't ever get tired of hearing somebody say, rejoice in the Lord. Don't get weary of that. Don't get tired of that. We need that. Rejoice in the Lord. And by the way, notice the, the most important thing there is in. Rejoice in the Lord. There's a lot of people, you know what they rejoice in? They rejoice in their circumstances. Or they rejoice in their possessions. They rejoice in what they have. They're rejoicing uh, in their relationships. Or they rejoice in their wealth. Or they rejoice in their uh, possessions. They rejoice in their health. What happens when your health isn't there? What happens if all the possessions go away? What happens if the relationships crumble? You see, uh, you, you have to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what you have in Christ. Because what you have in Christ will never change. And if that never changes, my joy can't change. See, don't, don't, I, I just heard somebody this week, um, they, were, they were saying how uh, upset they were and whose fault it was that they were upset. And the truth is, it's not somebody else's fault you're upset. It's your fault you're upset. Why would you give someone else the power to make you happy or to make you sad? You know, Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue. My disposition depends on you. No, it doesn't. My disposition depends on me. I'm not going to let you have that power over me. So I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoicing in Christ. And it's what we have in Christ that causes us to rejoice. Listen, we're, we're, we're in Him, we're accepted in the Beloved. In Him, we have eternal life. In Him, we have forgiveness of sin. In Him, we have wisdom. In Him, we have victory over sin and Satan. In Him, we have redemption through His blood. In Him, we have the righteousness of God. In Him, we live and move and have our being. Oh, sometimes you ought to just go through the Bible and, and, and the New Testament particularly and, and start maybe in the book of Ephesians and just look at all the things you have 
in Christ. We have everything in Him. And listen, what we have in Him will never be taken away from us. What a joy that is. Joy ought to be the attribute of those who are saved. Ought to be a happy Christian. We're in Christ, whether in poverty or in plenty, whether in sorrow or in singing, whether, uh, whether we have little or we have plenty. Cultivate a rejoicing heart. Rejoice in the Lord. And it's not grievous for me to keep saying that and for you to keep hearing it is safe. Okay? So rejoice in the Lord. Then, number two, the second step to being happy in your Christian service is resist the enemy. Resist the enemy. Verse 2, beware of dogs. Well, duh, we know that, don't we? Um, that we put a sign on our gate, beware of the dog. Uh, that's not what that's talking about, by the way. Uh, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. All right, number one, let's look at this. Beware of dogs. Now again, that's, that's, not, that, that's not literally, that's figuratively, though it might be wise to beware of the dog too. But let's look at some scriptures, okay? Matthew 7 and verse number 6. Matthew 7 is the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gives, and he mentions dogs in the Sermon on the Mount. And what Jesus says here, notice with me verse number 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs. Whether it's dogs or swine, he's talking referring to unsafe people here. So uh, again, not a real good connotation. Uh, for the word dog, an unsaved person, so to speak, all right? Now, go to the Old Testament with me, to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah 56, notice with me verse number 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. These are, by the way, these are, this is reference to false teachers or false professors there of Israel who, who are not, uh, they, they made a profession, but they, they made it for selfish gain. In other words, they're, they're, they're doing it for their own gain in their own pleasure, not anything to please God. In fact, look at verse 11. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. So he's saying it's, it's, it's not any, doesn't do any good to discuss the things of God with them. They're not interested in talking about things of God. They're interested in getting gain. They're interested in what they can get out of it. So here they, here they are, people who, you mean, you mean, Pastor, there's people who will teach and preach and they, they purposefully won't say the truth of the Bible so they can get money out of it or they can get gain? Yes. <laughs> yes. You can... Uh, I wish it weren't true. It was true in that day. It's, it's even more true in our day. You know, the Bible says in the last days, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. And we're there. And, and what, what, what's he saying? Beware of them. You know why? Listen, it'll rob you of your joy. It'll take your joy away. Oh, you can, you can send the money into them if you want. It'll increase their joy, but it won't increase yours. It won't work that way, my friend. Be careful. In Philippi, the church had false teachers coming in, and that's who Paul's referring to in the epistle there of, Philippi, of, of Philippians. He's telling them they, what they were trying to do was assimilate Judaism and Christianity. They were saying, yeah, yeah, accept Jesus, that's fine, but you still need to be circumcised. 
you still need to keep the Mosaic law. Uh, and, and you know what? Paul had no patience with those people at all. None. He told the church of Galatia who had the same issue. He's saying, if anybody comes in and preach unto you any other gospel than what I have preached, let him be accursed. He said, let him be damned to hell. That's what he was saying. That's pretty strong language. But he had no patience with that whatsoever. Anybody that would, would add to the gospel. And so beware of, of teachers, beware of preachers who are in it for gain, in it for what they can get out of it. Be careful. Beware of those. In Psalm 22, dogs is used for those who inflict cruelty. In Proverbs 26, dogs is used as a, for, to, to represent a foolish or a sin-loving man. What is, what is God trying to tell us when it comes to being aware of dogs? I think He's trying to, to tell us this. Beware of any influence or all influences that weaken the gospel and would turn you away from the truth. Beware. We have... Listen, in their day, obviously, someone had to come to their church. They didn't go home and turn on the television. They didn't go home and turn on the radio. They didn't have access to those. People came. We have so much more access now to false teaching. You know, it's, it's the people in Galatia when Paul said, um, I marvel that you're so soon removed from the faith that, that he delivered to them. He said, who hath bewitched you? Who is it that hindered you? Who is it? There's somebody, and, and listen, I, I, I wish I could <laughs> tell you how many times uh, in, in the last, oh, I'd say in the last 15 years, uh, maybe 20 years, but, but for sure 15 years, how many people have been led astray doctrinally because of the Internet? Getting, getting stuff on the Internet, man, just because what's well, on the Internet must be true. And you must be an idiot. <laughs> no, it's not true. Be careful about that. Anybody can stick a camera in front of them and start teaching something and saying things, and it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's biblical. So be careful about that. And, and, and there's folks in it that are just in it for gain. And, and that's all they're in it for. So be cautious. Beware of dogs. And then it says, Beware of evil workers. Evil workers. Those that are set upon doing all the harm they can. Remember, evil was where you want to bring harm to someone else. Okay? That's evil. These are people that, that they kind of get off on one small point of Christianity of some kind and they make it a huge point. Okay? And, and, and they make it so, so big they get blind to the rest of the beauty of Christianity and the beauty of the Christian life. It's all focused on this one thing. I just, it was funny because I just read, uh, Brother Yoder, I read a thing from a pastor he said he just returned from a camp meeting. And he said, and I heard everything preached against from polo shirts to tennis shoes to wire rim glasses. You know what I mean? Boy, those are all key biblical issues. You know what I'm saying? Nothing that, and what he was making the point was, nothing that was biblical, nothing that was scriptural. He said in three of the sermons, there was one scripture, and then you closed your Bible and never had to open it again. In another sermon, there was never a Bible scripture given. Yeah, you understand? We're, we're making big things out of little things that, that don't matter. And, and I, I, can, I, I call people like this in the church, I call them the cranks of the church. Why is that? Well, they exaggerate things that aren't important. They exaggerate trifles. Okay? jump on the bandwagon of some new theory or some new, new thought. They, these are the people who will have high standards for everybody else, but they don't see anything wrong ever in their own life. It's really the people of, 
of who Jesus was saying, maybe, maybe the, the, the Pharisee of their day, I don't know, who, who can see the speck in someone else's eye but can't see the big beam coming out of their own eye. And, 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 and listen, that's evil. That's, you, have to, you have to recognize that. Don't, you don't want to be that person. Don't. God calls them evildoers. You know, in Proverbs, when it talks about six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. One of the other things on the list is the one that sows discord among the brethren. Tries to, tries to find things that he can get people to, to be disagreeable about or to, to be upset about and, and try to get one person pitted against another person. God says he doesn't just hate that. That's an abomination to him. See, that's an evil worker. Listen, these are workers, but they're evil workers. Then they're not outside the church. They were inside the church. Okay? So don't be that guy. All right? Don't be, don't be the, the evil worker. And, and if you think, man, I, maybe I'm making too much out of a little thing, then you may be making too much out of a little thing. Don't, don't be out to hurt people. Be out to help people. Any person, listen, any person who works against the gospel and the grace of God in someone's life is an evildoer. Yeah, there's, there's folks who, uh, who are at all different stages. In, in your Christian walk, if, if, if the organ here is where you get saved, and, and over here to the piano is where you're, you're just like Jesus, okay? We all have that journey to take from, from salvation to Christ-likeness. And you know what? Everybody in this room is somewhere different on this walk, Okay? Some of you may be to here. Some of you may be over here. But don't, if you're over here, don't look back and say, oh man, what's wrong with you? Let, let, let God work with them. Let God help them. Let them come. Let them learn. Let the Holy Spirit of God help them. And they'll grow. They'll come along. And if you have that spirit, you're probably not as close to Christ's likeness as you think you are. All right? So, so just, just, be, be encouraging. Be, don't, don't get caught up and end up being an evil worker. You always, always ask yourself, is this helping to bring unity? Is this helping somebody to the grace of God? Or will it cause discord? Will it cause problems? Okay? So beware of evil workers. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Then he said, number three, beware of the concision. The concision. It's a concision. Now, if I, if I took a poll right now and said, all right, how many uh, can define that word concision? Uh, most of you would say, I haven't used that word recently in, in my conversations, and you probably wouldn't. It really means mutilation or cutting in pieces. It's, a, it's really a play on words for the word circumcision. See, the Judaizers were boasting that they were circumcised according to God's covenant with Abraham. And they taught now, that's fine if you put your faith in Jesus, but you still need to be circumcised according to the law of Moses. But you understand, true circumcision for the believer has nothing to do with the flesh. It has everything to do with the work of God in our heart. Look at Romans chapter 2, will you please? Go back to Romans chapter 2. Notice what Paul writes here in verse number 25. Romans 2 and verse 25. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doth transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one, what church? Inwardly. And circumcision is that of the 
heart and in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. You have that. It's not about, it's not about the outward. It's not about, the, notice the words outward, the letter, and men. Outward, keeping the letter of the law, so men will think good of me. As opposed to inward, heart, spirit, and God. Inward, heart, spirit, and God. I have all those words circled in my Bible on that passage. Because that's the work that God does. How much easier is it to just have outwardly something done and never have any change in your heart? Never have change in your life? With the are you inside ministry and, you know, with that ministry and, listen, I, we, we are eternally grateful for the men and I pray they truly mean it when they get saved. All we can do is, I mean, we make them stand up in front of all the other guys. And uh, they, they have to stand there and everybody looks at them and, and that they've received Christ as their Savior. Um, is, it, is it jailhouse conversion? Is it real? I don't know if it's real or not. I'm praying it is. And some of the guys really mean, seem to mean business and be sincere about it. We really won't know till we get to heaven uh, how these fellows really did and, and where they went on, some of them from here. Uh, but, but, but God's doing a work and, and they, they understand something. The head of the prison says we understand that that the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. And we've been trying to help these guys and do these guys. You know what they do? They just come right back. Because he says we don't reach their heart. And the change has to start from within. And listen, my friend, there'll never be any change in your life till the change starts from within. It starts from the heart. Don't just, uh, if you, Brother Brother Yoder prayed it tonight, that the change comes from the inside out. Not from the outside in. Okay? And so when God begins to work in the inside, he, 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 takes, away that, he takes away that flesh from the spirit and, and gives us that desire. If the circumcision is of the heart. So what he's, what he's reminding us here is that any, any ceremony or any, anything added to salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone is, is a defilement to salvation. It's, a, it's, a, it's an anathema. It says it's, it's no good. You listen, it's either all of grace or it's all of works. It cannot be grace and works. There cannot be a mixture. If, if anything added to faith in Christ is to be condemned, it's faith in Christ alone for salvation. You don't add anything to it, Okay? And so he's saying, beware of the concision. Then, number three, so he said, first of all, if you're going to have joy in, the, in, your, in your walk, you are going to be rejoicing. You're going to resist the enemy. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. And then the third thing he says to do is verse number three of Philippians 3, and that is refrain from the flesh. Refrain from the flesh. Notice what he says. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Judaism was a religion of works and therefore it's a religion of the flesh. We said earlier, circumcision is for the believer is a work of the Holy Spirit of God done in our hearts, cutting away the flesh from the Spirit. He's, he's moving us from a self-centered life to a Christ-centered life. Every unbeliever lives a self-centered life. No man yet, Jesus said, ever hated himself. Well, I know people say, I don't like myself. Now, the truth is, you, everybody loves themselves. We, we look out for ourselves. And, and God says that what he's moving us to is from a self-centered life to a Christ-centered life, to where it's no longer about anything about us. It is about Christ. He must increase, I must decrease. Okay, That's true of every believer. And he's taking us through that process as we go through and refraining from the flesh. Now, there's three characteristics of those that have undergone this spiritual circumcision of the heart. 
okay? And it lists it here for us when it says, they worship God in the Spirit. They worship God in the Spirit. Notice, it's not ritual. It's not ceremonies. It's not by letter of the law. It's spiritual worship. What did Jesus say to the woman at the well? God is a spirit, and they that worship Him, worship Him in spirit and in truth. Spiritual worship. They worship God in the spirit. And again, to worship is always a matter of the spirit. It's not a matter of the flesh. We are three-part being. Once you're saved, you're a three-part being. What are we? Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. The part of you that communicates with God, the part of me that communicates with God is our spirit. Okay? God, God, His spirit, the Bible says, God's spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So that part of us that bears witness with the Holy Spirit is our spirit. So when we come to church, what, what the, to the worship of the church ought to be to our spirit, not to our soul and our body. And so often in our churches today, the service is all aimed for the soul and the body. I want to feel good. I like the song if I can tap my toe to it. I like the sermon if I can laugh. And it's funny. See? We, it's about my, my mind, my soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. What I think, what I want, what I feel. As long as, as long as that's pleasing to me, that was a good service. See? But that's your soul and not your spirit. The music, the message, the service is for the spirit to bear witness with your spirit, not your soul and your flesh. The truth is, uh, here's the thing. If it's pleasing to the Spirit, will your flesh like it? Huh, no. The flesh is, is contrary to the Spirit. The Spirit contrary to the flesh. These two are contrary one to the other. They're against each other. When my flesh likes something, the Spirit doesn't. My Spirit likes something, the flesh doesn't. Okay? That's, why, that's why it's so difficult for unsafe people to come to church. Unsafe people, unsafe people, you say, hey, come to church with me Wednesday night. They're like, what? Why would I do that? And you understand, they have no spirit to enjoy the service. It'd be, it, it's, it's, it's almost as bad as uh, Alma back here. Alma doesn't know much English. She doesn't understand hardly anything I say. Bless her heart, she comes every service. Probably because she loves her husband. Amen. Maybe he says you're going. I don't know, but uh, you know. But she comes. But can you imagine coming service after service after service, and you and everybody else was talking a different language than you? It'd be awful difficult to, to to keep coming and understand what's being said, wouldn't it? But you know what? You know what she does understand. The spirit bears witness with her spirit. She had no idea what I just said, but her husband will interpret that for. Because the Spirit still speaks to her spirit. But you understand, if you were lost, you don't have any communi- there's no there's no communication with the Spirit of God. And so why why would I be in church? When whenever you hear somebody say, Ah, church is boring. What they mean is my flesh doesn't enjoy it. My flesh doesn't enjoy it. And that's okay. Don't take offense to that. Just understand, it's for the spirit, it's not for the flesh. So we worship God in spirit. We worship God when we walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. You understand, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Worship isn't just when you come together at church. There's, in fact, there's very little is what we think of worship. Uh, there's, there's really, you're hard pressed to find a worship service in the New Testament. Most, most worship is personal worship. Because our body is the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of God. And so we're to, we're to walk with God and we're to walk every day worshiping Him. And when we walk in the Spirit and not after the flesh, then we're worshiping God in the Spirit. Understand? And not in the flesh. Okay? Number two, notice they worship God in the Spirit. They rejoice... In Christ Jesus. Here we go again. 
My glorying, my rejoicing is in Christ. I'm saved by His grace. I'm kept by His grace. I'm disciplined by His grace. I'm guided by His grace. I'm supplied by His grace. If, if it's up to me, I fail miserably. Listen to me tonight. The Christian life isn't hard. It's impossible. If you're doing it by yourself. If you're trying to do it on your own, with your willpower, you'll never make it. You'll fail miserably. You, you have to be in Christ. You have to be relying on Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. It's His power, not our power. And so we rejoice in Christ. And then the, the, the third one, C, I think it is on your outline. They have no confidence in the flesh. They have no confidence in the flesh. Paul said in Romans 7 and verse 18, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Can I help us now tonight? The old nature, which is your flesh, that old nature inside of you and the old nature inside of me is, is as capable of doing any wicked, vile, sinful thing as anyone you've ever heard or seen of. Don't, don't you ever hear something and say, this, I'd never be able to do that. No, that same wicked nature that's in that person, it dwells in you too. And so you have to, don't put any confidence in yourself. When I say, well, I'll never do that, you know what I'm putting my confidence in? Me. Well, I know I won't, what I won't do. I can tell you, I could tell you story after story after story tonight of people who I've heard through 35 years of pastoring who said, I'll never do. And they did. And they did. Because you can't put confidence in your flesh. What should you say? By the grace of God, I'll never do that. By the grace of God, with the help of God, I'll never do that. But that, that, that flesh is, is, is the same on you or me as it is on them. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3 and verse 6, don't overlook it, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. <laughs> and we're all born of the flesh, brother. And don't underestimate that. Don't think that your flesh is better than somebody else's flesh. You just go around comparing flesh, you're not going to get very far. The flesh is, a, is opposed to the spirit and the spirit to the flesh. Don't trust your flesh. How many times have people say, oh no, it won't, won't affect me. Oh, I can do this, it won't hurt me. <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. It's got you defeated already because it, your flesh has you believing in itself. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own songwriter knew what he was talking about look at Galatians chapter 5 would you go there please Galatians chapter 5 notice with me verse 24 well and you know in verse 22 is the fruit of the spirit the previous verses are the works of the flesh. Flesh and the Spirit, contrary one to the other. Once you get through with the fruit of the Spirit in verse number 23, verse 24 says, They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. There's one place for the flesh, the old nature, the cross. That's where it belongs. Crucify it. Put it to death. Crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts thereof. And how often do you have to do that? Daily. That's what Paul meant when he said, I die daily. So, what do you got to do to have a happy Christian life? You be rejoicing. In Christ, rejoice in the Lord. You resist the enemy. 
Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. And then you have to restrain the flesh. Refrain from the flesh. Stay away, crucify the flesh. You, you worship God in the Spirit. You rejoice in Christ Jesus. You put no confidence in the flesh, no confidence in the old nature. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. You know, you know what the good thing is about you? Jesus Christ. You know what the good thing is about me? Jesus Christ. Outside of Him, there's nothing good about me. Somebody was talking about a, someone who's graduating high school and they said, well, you know that it was a, it was a girl and said, well, I, I don't think she's a Christian, but she's a good girl. I know what you're trying to say. But the Bible says that's not true. And before you and I were saved, we weren't good either. And I'm, I'm st- the only good thing about me is Jesus Christ. And he's not just the best thing, he's the only thing that's good about me. And he's the only thing good about you. That's why we rejoice in the Lord. And he said it over and over and over again. Hey, Let's be happy Christians. Let's not just be Christians. Let's be happy Christians. Let's be rejoicing in the Lord. Amen? Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for this admonition from Philippians by Paul to the church there. Father, I pray that you will take these truths to us. Lord, that we'll rejoice in you. That, Lord, we'll take time to just consider all you've done for us. My, it's so good to be in Christ. What a, what a place to be. What a position to have. And I pray that we would grasp what that means in each one of our lives. Help us to re- resist the enemy and understand uh, what he uses and who he uses to try to get us off course and get us to take away our joy. Lord, I pray that we would refrain from the flesh, that we'd have no confidence in ourselves, but our confidence and our trust would be in you. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word tonight. Help us to live the Bible we, love, we know and we've learned this evening. Dismiss us now with your care and make us mindful of your presence as you go with us tonight. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. 128, if you need it, let's sing that together as our dismissal song. All right? The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy, that's why you're happy, that's why we're happy tonight. God bless you, you're dismissed. Choir, come right on up.